Hello grade sevens and welcome back. Can you believe it? This is our last lesson for term three. My name is Buitumelo Diale and this is my contribution to Tumamina teaching. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at a topic that some of your teachers might have already covered, which is poverty and inequality. Before we can understand what inequality and poverty is, we need to first look at the word socioeconomic imbalance and understand what it means. Imbalance simply means that something isn't even. Now, what are socioeconomic imbalances? These are imbalances in people's access to resources such as housing, healthcare, education and living standards. What does inequality mean? Inequality is a difference in social status, wealth or opportunities between different groups of people. Inequalities can be mainly divided into two groups. Inequality in income and inequality in opportunities. There are a few places where we can see these inequalities. Let's have a quick look at the example behind me. In these two photos, we can clearly see that there's inequality between people based on housing. There are families in our country who own houses and then there are families who have to live in shacks because they cannot afford a house. Some people can afford to put their children in high fee paying schools where other people have to send their children to schools where there are 70 learners in one class. Those would be the low fee paying schools. This also causes an inequality in opportunities because these learners that are exposed to different schools do not have the same opportunities. Learners in privileged schools have access to infrastructure and resources that other learners do not have. We can also see inequality in the healthcare system. Some people in our country can afford to get some of the best medical treatment in the world, while other people cannot even afford basic medical expenses such as a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment. People who cannot afford to go to private hospitals or clinics must go to state-owned hospitals and clinics. Grade sevens, all of these inequalities happen in our country. This is our reality. I want you to please stop this video and discuss in your class with your classmate or even your teacher and talk about some of the inequalities that you face in your community. I'm sure you thought about a lot of inequalities. However, have you ever heard about the constitutional law? The constitutional law is the highest law in South Africa and it explains what all our rights and duties are. Within the constitutions, we find a section called the Bill of Rights, which is a list of our most important rights in our country. In the Bill of Rights, it is stated that all South Africans are equal. But as we saw earlier on, there are many inequalities that we face in our country. What could be the cause of these inequalities? There are a few factors that contribute to inequality, such as apartheid. Apartheid caused a big divide among South Africans and the repercussions can still be seen in South Africa today. An example of another factor that contributes to inequalities is poor service delivery. Some provinces and towns receive better service delivery while other parts have no service delivery. Some towns do not even have drinkable water while others have great facilities and services. Another important factor is the lack of accessibility and quality education. We all know that some schools are not performing as desired due to a lack of infrastructure and resources. Not all South Africans can afford quality education and tertiary education. 
That is why Tumamina Teaching offers free educational content and learning content to all South Africans. Another factor that we need to consider is the gender inequality in South Africa. This is a big problem in our country. In a lot of career fields, women are not seen as worthy or able to do a job. There are even companies that give men a larger salary than women purely because it is men. Grade sevens, these are just some of the factors that contribute to the inequalities that we face in our country, but they're obviously not all the factors that we face. Grade sevens, now that you have a better understanding of what inequalities are, I think this is a perfect time to move over to poverty. Have you ever heard of breadline? The bread line is where people can only afford to buy bread for the day. You must be thinking one single loaf of bread for the whole family for the whole day. Yes, grade sevens, that's absolutely right. There are people in our country who have one bread or even less to live on each day. But imagine a whole family having to survive on that one bread. Grade sevens, you know what's even more shocking? The fact that more than half of the people of our country live below the breadline. Poverty is a vicious cycle. And if a family falls into poverty, it is difficult for members of that family to break free from that cycle. As they cannot afford tertiary training or education. These people cannot acquire the skills and knowledge that they will need to get a job. This means that those people then find themselves unemployed or in jobs that do not pay well and then therefore have to live below the breadline. Grade sevens, yes, this is a vicious cycle, but there is hope. There are ways to break free from this cycle. Some of the responsibility to help us break free from this cycle lies with the government but we also need to take matters in our own hands. And I have no doubt that we can do exactly that. One of the ways in which we can do that is to study hard in school, get good grades so that we can qualify for bursaries or scholarships that can help pay for our tuition fees at a tertiary level. So yes, you can break free from that cycle. I can break free from that cycle. We can all break free from this vicious cycle. The government spends a lot of money on programs to promote equality and improve people's skills each year so that they can study at a tertiary institution and one day get good jobs. However, this is not the only solution. Sustainable job creation is a fantastic and feasible solution. But what exactly are sustainable jobs? Sustainable job creation refers to jobs that enable employees to work at a place for a few years and earn a solid and sustainable income for their families. There are currently many jobs in our country that cannot be filled because people do not have the necessary skills or training to apply for these jobs. Therefore, more job opportunities must also be created for people who have not necessarily received formal training. Grade sevens, this is where you come in as an entrepreneur. If you start a business and if you create jobs, you'll be able to employ more people and this will help them break free from the poverty cycle. Grade sevens, you can break the cycle today. All you need to do is to believe in yourself and work hard towards achieving your goals. In fact, by watching these two Mamina teaching videos, you are choosing quality education and creating the opportunity for yourself. Well done. Grade sevens, we've come to the end of this lesson and the end of yet another term. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you in term four. Bye.